Hello, everyone. So it might look normal, but this distribution will ruin your stats. What do I mean by that? A little bit about me first. I'm a solutions engineer at DeepNote. We build an amazing data science notebook platform. I'll show you a little bit later, but uh, my real passion for a long time has been developing statistical software and uh, we'll see some of that today. So where are we headed with this talk? Well, first of all, what is a contaminated normal curve? I'm gonna describe that to you. And uh, it turns out that uh, contamination is something we should expect uh, when we're dealing with statistics. So um, it'll be good to, to get caught up on what this actually means. But how does contamination actually affect our statistics? And I'm going to uh, give you some live, uh, live demonstration of um, how our statistics behave under contamination and provide some learning resources for you. And of course, what can we do about it? And I'll introduce a, a new uh, Python library uh, that can help deal with um, issues of non-robust statistics. So first things first, what is a contaminated normal curve? Just curious, as, you, as you're sort of looking at this uh, chart, which distribution do you think is a standard normal distribution? And which do you think is a contaminated normal distribution? You can take a second to think about that. Usually uh, when I talk about these things like 50-50, the room will say, oh, the orange one is normal. And the other 50 will say, oh, the blue one is normal. Uh, it turns out that the blue curve is contaminated. And the giveaway here uh, is that if you look at the tails of the distribution, the blue distribution is, has slightly, we say heavier tails or higher tails. In other words, there are just more outliers. Okay, but the question is, so what? What does this matter? Well, let me explain something really cool to you. So on the left, we've got two populations and they're separated by a pretty good effect size there. You can see the peaks are definitely different. Uh, I think it's like 0.8 is the delta between the two orange curves. Those are standard normal curves. Then if you focus on the right, we have two other populations. They have the same, uh, the same difference between peaks. Okay, so it's the same effect size essentially. And, uh, but the thing is that those distributions are contaminated, okay? And what we wanna know is if we compare uh, the orange groups and uh, look at how many times we can find a significant difference, and then we also compare the blue groups together, uh, we also wanna see uh, you know, uh, how many times are we getting a significant, significant difference. And an another way of phrasing that is looking at power. So uh, we wanna know the uh, probability of finding a difference or the probability of finding an effect uh, when there really is one, and there really is one. Well, it turns out that under normality, everything looks great. 90% of the time, we find a difference between the left orange curve and the right orange curve, and this is what we want. Uh, unfortunately, though, even if you look to the right, uh, our power has gone all the way down to 0 0.2. So we only have a 20% chance of finding an effect when we're doing a, a hypothesis test against these uh, contaminated normal distributions. So that's, that's pretty grim. I want to just quickly move over to uh, some resources where you can explore these concepts more. Uh, if for whatever reason you can't see this notebook, I'm sure Logan will uh, jump in and tell me. Um, but anyway, we're looking at uh, a deep note notebook right now. Uh, it's an interactive notebook and I'll actually share it with you later so you can fool around with these things. Um, it, this is basically a notebook full of interactive widgets where you can control or you can set up different types of populations and see how that actually affects things like standard error, the average, the trimmed mean, and various other different kinds of statistics and measures and hypothesis tests. And it's all very interactive and it's meant as a shareable learning resources. If, uh, if we go all the way down though, I have this really cool area here where you can actually programmatically define the skewness in your population and how thick the tails are. In other words, you can make it contaminated sort of uh, programmatically to a certain degree. And just a TLDR here, and, I, and I obviously I will share this notebook with you. Uh, when we increase skewness and then we compare something like 
the percentile bootstrap test, which is a, a robust hypothesis test, to the traditional t-test, which you might have learned in school, which is not robust, um, when we increase skewness uh, and we run this, uh, we find that the t-test ends up with a higher probability of type 1 error. So the t-test is not robust. You'll end up saying we found an effect when there really isn't an effect. And more to the point of this talk, when you increase heaviness, okay, so this is again, you're sort of increasing contamination, uh, you'll find that the t-test actually falls below the nominal or 5% error rate that we accept, which is an indication of low power as I showed before. Anyway, this notebook is full of really cool, interesting thing, uh, parameters you can change. It's a really great resources for students or anyone who's learning uh, more about uh, robust statistics. So let me come back to my slide. Okay. Of course, the question is, so look, you've shown us that, uh, hey, there's some curves that are contaminated. Maybe we should expect outliers in our data sets. I think anyone who's worked with data probably realized you should expect outliers in your data sets. Um, what can you actually do about it? Well, you can, if you, uh, if you like, you can use uh, this library that I wrote. And I was fortunate enough to write this library with Randar Wilcox, who is, um, He's a legendary statistician and um, he wrote a lot of these functions in R and I simply moved them over to Python. So what hypothesis is, is it's a set of hypothesis tests um, for comparing groups and measuring associations. So if you are comfortable with things like t-tests, regression, correlation, ANOVA, things like that, Hypothesize has analogs to all of those that are very, very easy to use. And because it uses trimmed means and bootstrapping and other robust methods, you don't have to worry about um, uh, type two error and type one error quite as much as you do with traditional tests. Okay, so conclusions. What is a contaminated normal curve? Well, it's simply uh, actually just a mixture of uh, a standard normal curve and uh, another bell-shaped curve with the same mean where you sort of increase the number of outliers, okay? So it's like mixing two curves, one curve that doesn't have any outliers and one curve that does, but they're both bell-shaped and centered at the same mean. And how does contamination affect our statistics? Well, the typ typically uh, it, it uh, leads to incredibly low power or um, a wider confidence intervals. And what can we do about it? Well, I just shared with you that uh, I wrote a library that can help you uh, conduct robust hypothesis tests. So uh, just wrapping up here, quick call to action. If you'd like to uh, kindly give me a star on GitHub, that would be wonderful. And if you point your camera at this QR code, uh, you'll get a chance to, uh, to have a notebook uh, exactly like the one I shared with you. And uh, you can sort of interactively learn about these things yourself. Okay, thank you very much.